Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome back to another AP Computer Science 2020 FRQ uh, review video. So because tomorrow is going to be the AP Computer Science um, makeup exam for 2020 being June 3rd, I decided that I wanted to make one more video kind of going over one more practice uh, exam just so that you will kind of feel comfortable. I've already made eight videos up to this point so if you haven't uh, done some of them definitely check them out i especially recommend seven and eight because they include a new type of question which is specific to this particular year's exam uh, so definitely if you haven't looked at those i recommend checking them out but i'm going to be doing one additional one specifically for those people who are doing makeups simply if they've already done for example one through eight and you know they did it whenever they were trying to do their exam and then something went wrong so, um kind of because once you go back to redo a question if you've already done it you probably kind of have an idea already about the solution to the problem and it's not going to be as effective so I'm giving you one extra exam practice that you can try and this one is actually from the AP live on May 4th 2020 and it was administered um, during that time it's mock exam number one and we'll be going over question number one the link for it will be in the description down below all right without further ado let's get started all right, so it says over here, and of course this is going to be an array and array list question. I thought that this would be the best to show off simply because the um, methods and control structures type of questions, uh, I don't think kind of people have often more trouble with array and array list, you know, which are more complicated units than units using, you know, units one through, or questions using units one through four. So we can read the question over here. In fact, I haven't even set up my documents. So I should say part A over here. So it says a student plans to analyze product reviews found on a website by looking for keywords and posted reviews. Okay. So again, uh, and I got a, a comment, a, a, actually a very good comment, asking me to make a video kind of about some keywords, you know, that you should look out for. So in this video, I'm, I'm kind of going to talk about, as, as we read the question, I'm going to highlight some things that are popping into my mind as I read the actual question, just so that you kind of have an idea of, of maybe how you can use some of the wording of the questions to kind of think about your final, uh, your final ideas. So it says here, and again, it's always very important to remember the purpose, right? The entire purpose of the question. So it's, a, it's we're really, what we're talking about here is analyzing product reviews, right? It says to analyze product reviews. And, you know, oftentimes it's very important to actually be able to, you know, analyze the purpose of these questions because a lot of times these questions are really worded, you know, with a lot of, you know, a lot of words that may be technical, you know, with class names and kind of all these different things. So it's kind of important to be able to take look at the bigger picture as well and then look at some of these smaller details. So it says over here, the product review class shown below is used to represent a single review. So this class over here, product review, represents a single one review of a product. So you can have multiple product reviews for a specific product. It says a product review consists of a product name and a review of that product. So you can see over here that we have, just representing this, we have two fields over here. We have the name field and the review field, and both of these are string classes. Now it's important to no denote that these are private fields, so we will have the getter uh, methods over here to get their values, to get the name and to get the uh, review of the actual product review. And then here we have a constructor that will initialize an object with a name and a review. So that is also very, uh, very useful to see over here and very useful to know. All right, so that is kind of the first half. Then it says over here, the review collector class shown below is used to represent a collection of reviews to be analyzed. So you talk about, you know, uh, this is going to be a collection of reviews. What are the reviews? Well, the reviews are going to be represented by product review. So if you kind of think about the hierarchy, the review collector will contain or kind of, uh, you know, collect a lot of these individual product reviews, right? So it's kind of a one, or it's a many to one relationship here. You'll have many product reviews going to one review collector, okay? Now let's look at the fields of this one. So we have two fields. We have a review list field 
And this is where we bring in the array list. This is going to be an array list of product review objects, right? So this is going to be a list of reviews. Then product list, which is going to be uh, a, a, an array list of strings. So this will contain strings probably for each individual product. Okay, over, um, over there. And also it's important to remember that when they say product list, you know, this may be for the actual name of the products and up here under the product review class, there is also a name for the product right over here. So this is going to be the name for the actual product. Okay, so you, you could have multiple product reviews for different, uh, for different products, right? Because let's say you have a product A and a product B, I could have four product reviews where the name is set to pro product A, and I could have four product reviews that are set to product B, okay? So knowing that we have now these two, we simply have a constructor that will um, initialize these two empty array lists, and now these are our two methods, okay, that we are going to be filling out in part A and part B respectfully, or respect, um, respectively, okay? So over here, we have add the add review method, which will add a new review to the collection of reviews, okay? And this is a void method, and we take in a product for you. All right, then over here we have a get num good reviews, which will return the number of good reviews as described in part B. So knowing all of this, we can finally go over to part A to start answering the question. So it says over here, write the add review method, which adds a single product review represented by a product review object to the review collector object. The add review method does the following when it adds a product review. So the first thing it says, the product review object is added to the review list instance variable. Remember, the review list over here is a field of review collector. Then the second thing is it says the product name for the product review object is added to the product list if it's not already found in the list, okay? And so, and it says um, they may be added in any order. So that's good. We don't have to necessarily worry about order. So now knowing this, it just asks us to complete the method. So I'm going to type the header of the actual method, public void add review, and then it takes in, so we have product uh, review and then prod review. That is the actual header of the method over here. So the first thing it asks us to do is to add the review object, the product review object to the review list. So I can just say add, and I'm adding a comment, so add, the object to list. And all we have to do here is one single line of code if you know the array list method. And remember, you will be allowed to use the Java quick reference guide. So you'll actually have access to all of your methods on your exam. Uh, if you don't already know, definitely check out, I believe it is the video on what you should have before um, before the exam video that's in the same playlist for AP Computer Science. Definitely check it out. I talk about it uh, right there and I provide a link for it. So. To simply add a product review, remember our product review is inside of our input, all we have to do is we simply say over here, uh, this, now I've gotten a lot of comments in the past about the this dot method, so I, I'm going to address it again, I've responded to so many comments about it, so I'm also going to address it in this video, is the this comment allows us to access fields of our class. So because I'm inside of the review collector class, I can simply say this dot review list to access the actual method of my class. Now, technically, I can also do it without the this dot keyword. It is simply a uh, best practice thing. It's not actually required. So if you didn't include it, you are still nearly 100% correct. Don't worry about, you know, um, don't worry if you include it or not. I just include it out of habit and also just out of practice. So definitely, um, if you if you want to use it, definitely use it. But if you don't want to use it or you're not really sure how it works, just don't worry about it at all, especially if it confuses you more than it because you don't want that over there. So now in order to add a product review, all we do is we say this.reviewList.add and we use the add, me um, the add method and then we put in prod, prod review inside of the add method. And that is it. That single line of code will add the object to the list. That is it. There's nothing else that you have to do there. Now, the second part is it says the product name is added. So the product name from the prod review object is added to the product list 
if the name is not already found. So key word there, and remember, this is a key word. It says the word if. That is a, a major indicator that we're going to be doing some sort of conditional statement, right? If statement inside of our code. So over here, so this is going to be um, add product name to name to list, okay? So because we're, we are saying the if, we will just type in an if statement. So the thing is, is that if the prog name is not already found in our product list up here, then we want to actually, um, then we want to actually return our, or we want to, sorry, add our product, or we're trying to add our product name to this product list. So we actually have two ways that we can uh, do this. And I think the best way is we can simply loop through all of our items and see if we found it or not. So now we actually need to search through the entire array to see if that product list is in there, or the product name is in there or not. So I can create a Boolean variable that will store whether or not the name already exists in the product list, right? So I can simply say over here, uh, found product name in list equals false, because initially it is false, we haven't found anything. Then we can loop through all of the items in our product list array list. To do that, we can do a for loop, and we can say int i equals zero as our um, creation of our counter variable. Then we can create our condition, which is that i is going to be less than product list dot size. Okay, remember the um, the actual way to get the number of elements inside of an array list is using the size method, not length. If you technically write that in your exam, it shouldn't count against you. But you know, it's just best it's best practice to actually use what is correct, which is the size method. Right, and then semicolon, and the last thing is that we are doing i plus plus. Now, technically, you could do this in a in a for each loop as well. There's nothing stopping you. I'm just doing it in this way. Um, but you could easily do it. Like I can write it as, for example, for a string like product name or name in or sorry, it's like this, and then uh, pro this dot product list. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with this either. And in fact, let's just do this for now because it's a little bit more concise. But if you use the three part for loop, that is how, how I showed it before, that is how you would set it up. And then you would want to do, in order to get the name, right, you would do uh, this.productList.get and then you'd put i in there. So if you were to use the three part for loop or the three header for loop, you would do this line of code extra so you actually got the name out. But we'll just do it uh, like this for now. Okay. And then all we have to say here is if our name inside of our, uh, that we got in our for loop, if our name is equal to, and remember we use the double equals for this conditional, if the name is going to be equal to the actual, um, the name of the product in here, so we can go up here and we see that we have to use the get name method. Remember, you cannot use just dot name, right? I have to say here, prod review dot get name if you just said dot name instead of dot get name you would unfortunately be incorrect because name is private so i wouldn't be able to access it in the class that i'm currently in so i can say that if it is equal to that then all i want to do is i simply want to say found product name in list is going to be equal to uh, in list equals in list if i can type correctly equals to uh, true over here. And I'll just add comments so that you can see where I'm at, what all those are actually, what all of the curly braces are for. That's all I have to do in here. So all this is going to do, all this for loop is doing is searching through every single item within my array list. And if it finds in fact that any of the items is equal to the product name, then it sets this variable to true. So then now we could do our the last part of the question over here. Because it says that if the product name is not already found in the list, right, which is now denoted by this Boolean variable, then we want to actually add it to our list. So I can simply say here, if the found product name in list is equal to false, right, meaning that you did not find it in the list, then you want to add it to the actual list. So to do that, you can do the this keyword. And again, remember, this is completely optional. This dot product list dot add 
right? And then you can simply just say a prod review dot get name, just like that. All right, so that is all you have to do for this entire question. So what you do first is you add the um, object to the list, which is probably the easiest thing that you have to do. And then you have to add the product name to the list if it doesn't already exist in there. So the first part with this for loop is seeing that if it does exist in there, because if it already exists, if the product name's already in my product list, then I don't need to add it again, because then you'd have a duplicate or a duplicate. So in this case, um, if it is false, meaning that you did not find the product name in the actual list, then you will add it to the list. So that is it for part A, and this is what should be correct. So if you got this, then that is absolutely perfect. If you have any questions on any of the things that I do in here, definitely let me know in the comment section below, and I will help, I will help you answer them before the test. All right, so now let's move on to part B. Part B. And in terms of part A, part A was actually not that bad at all. The only thing that you know some people may have accidentally tried to do was they may have um, they may have not added this correctly, or they may have not you know done a for loop or something to actually to actually look for the product name. Because if you just added it, like if you just added the product list in there, you're forgetting one major step, which is to actually search if it already exists. All right. So as I said, on to part B. It says write the uh, get num good reviews method, which returns the number um, of good reviews for a given product name. Okay, so it returns the number of good reviews. Well, what does that actually mean? What's a good review? And that is what is going to be defined in, uh, next in the next sentence. It says a review is considered good if it contains the string best keyword here, all lowercase. If there are no reviews which a ma with a matching product name, the method returns zero, okay? Note that a review that contains best in all caps or best with any caps is not considered a good review since not all the letters are lowercase. But a review that contains, for example, a bestest is considered, or, um, asbestos is considered a good review since all the lower letter of best are lowercase. Okay, so it says that that is actually considered a good review over here. So then it just says complete the method get num good reviews. All right, so let's write the header for this method. So it's public int get num good reviews string prod name. Okay, so now the first thing is that the question's asking us. You know, and we have to return a number of good reviews and we're trying to count how many good reviews there are. So if we're trying to count how many good reviews, and that's another thing that I want to keep in mention, because remember, I was also talking about, you know, some keywords you can keep in mind. If they ever say something about count right over here, which is like uh, over here, you know, returns the number of good reviews that, you know, is, is going to be referencing some sort of counter variable that you have to create. So to do that, you know, we have to create some sort of counter variable, an integer variable that will keep a count. So I can say um, int over here, um, num good reviews. I'll, I'll make sure that I um, are, am a little bit more specific in my in my uh, variable name equals zero right over here. Okay. So now, what? How do we actually solve this question? Because we need to loop through. We actually have to check all of the reviews. And so in order to check all the reviews, we can look back up to our code for review collector. We actually have a list right over here. We have a list of our reviews. So we need to loop through that. I'm gonna create another for each loop here. So I'm going to say for product review review in my review list, right? Remember here, I'm using this, that's optional, and then product review review, this will store a variable for every single product review that I loop through. So now, right, I need to actually check and see if the review contains, okay, contains the word best, all lowercase. So how do we do that, okay? Well, how do we do that? We can simply use index of, the index of string method. The index of string method actually allows us to check for a specific, you know, a specific string. And the thing is with index of actually is that even if you use index of, it's not going to be case specific. So if I, or it is case specific. 
So if I were to do index of capital A in a lowercase a thing, it's not going to return anything. Okay. So actually, this this goes to our advantage over here. So what I need to do is I simply need to um, I can do an if statement right over here. So I can say if review dot and now remember review is going to be a product review object so if i go over to product review i can see all of the methods i can use and i'm trying to get this review i'm trying to get the value of the review uh field but you see that the field is private so given that it's private we need to use a getter method so i can say review dot get review just like that and now this is the actual review in a string and now I can add on to this. I can say get review, but then dot index of. And I just simply put in the string best. And again, all lowercase. Make sure it is all lowercase over here. So I say index of best. And if the index of best is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that is either the first thing in it or it's greater. Because remember, if this is not located inside of, if this is not located inside of my string, it's going to return negative one, okay? And that is also in your reference sheet. So it's very, very useful to have that reference sheet. But in this case, I'm just checking if the value is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that there is the word best in it. And if that's the case, I simply need to increase the counter right over here. So I need to say, um, num good reviews plus plus. And all that will do is it will simply increment one to my, it'll increment my integer over here by one. Okay. Now the thing is, is once I'm done counting, so once I'm done counting using this for loop, you have to make sure this is something that I, I um, talked about in the tips to get a good score on the on um, FRQ for AP Computer Science video is that when it says in, in the question over here to return the number of good reviews, it's very important that you include the return statement. A lot of people accidentally, like, you know, they'll write the thing and it's very good for them. Their answer is actually correct, but they forget the one thing, which is to actually return the number. If you forget that one thing, you know, that's going to cost you some points. So make sure that you always finish the question completely and return the value once you have to. All right, so that is it for part B. All we had to do here is we literally just had to, um, we, all we had to do was do index at best. If, if that was greater than or equal to zero, you add one to the counter and then you return the counter at the end. All right. So now the last thing is we have part C, the infamous new part C, which is a new type of question. And part C is actually a short answer question for the first time this year. Uh, they haven't had short answer questions in the FRQs before, like where you're not writing code and you're actually writing, you know, some sort of text. So this is a programmer wishes to create an array list containing the best reviews for each product. To determine the method get num good reviews can be modified to create this method. Describe the changes that could be made to the method uh, in order to could be made to the uh, get num good reviews in order to create a new method get best reviews by product. Don't write the program code. So in this case, get best reviews by product, you'd still need a product name. So in our header, we can say that um, this method should, let's see, and then identify any new modified variables or data structure that are no longer necessary um, from the get best reviews by product method as well as any that are no longer necessary okay and then describe how it would be implemented so the header for this would probably be something like public because again we need to access it void because we're not actually going to be returning anything in this case we're just getting best reviews by product unless we are returning let's quickly check um, it says wishes to create an array list. So that's not actually going to be, um, describe how modified, okay. So you do public void here and then get best reviews by product. And then you do open close parentheses string prod name. So all this would do is that this would add to an array list. It can either return an array list or it can add to an array list. In this case, it says, um, 
that it can create create the new method here. Now it doesn't specify actually if you're allowed to if you're allowed to change the class or if it wants you to return an array list. So in this case, it says wishes to create an array list, but um, what what you could do two things, right? You could either store it or you could you know, create a field of the class. And this is where these questions are a little bit strange because, you know, I feel like those could be, those, those are two valid answers. So I think that that's a good header for now. And then we can simply say that um, the, the get best reviews by product method uh, method would add, uh, would add the product review to a new field in the class into a new array list, um, a new, and I can say here a new product review array list because I want to specify the type, a new product review relay, um, new product review array list field in the class um, when or if rather. If the review contains the word best, like that. And I can say here that um, this could be done, or this can be done at the same point where the num good reviews method, or the um, get num reviews counter variable was incremented was incremented in the get num get num good reviews method. So in this case, that is what I would write. And again, I we have no like we have absolutely no rubric or anything for how these questions should be answered. So this is, you know, this is going to be a little bit interesting. But it does. I did say here that it would be add. You would add a product review to the array list, and then you would um, here. Uh, it could be done at the same point where the counter variable was incremented. And that's pretty much how, you know, I wrote the header and then I answered the question. Now, I'm sure there's stuff you can add to this question. If you have the time, definitely do. Again, we have no idea how these questions are actually going to be, um, how these questions are going to be counted, how many points there are. They didn't answer any of those type of questions. In fact, we didn't even know we'd have a part C until they started releasing the sample questions. So we're going to have to see how, you know, how it's graded. Unfortunately, we won't be able to know after the fact. But this is probably a decent answer, right? You just want to make sure that you follow all these things, right? Identify new or mod modified variables. We said here that we, um, you know, a new field that is going to be a product review array list. And then over here, and in fact, you can see that it, it literally highlights um, for me. It, it highlights the word new class and if. It's kind of funny because those are keywords in the language, right? But those same keywords sh you should include in your definitions. So like here, right, new array list or in here class right in the class if right ba basically saying that that should be done or it should be added to that array list um, field if the certain condition is true which i specified out in words and then over here i specified over here um describe how it would be implemented i said it could be done at the same point where the num good reviews kind of variable was incremented which is right over here in part b all right, everyone, that is pretty much it for uh, this particular um, this particular last review for the uh, makeup exam that is tomorrow. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I will try my best to answer them. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching. You guys will do very well tomorrow for those people who have to make it up. Uh, good luck, and as, as always, I wish great success.